hereby declare this meeting of the Howell Township Planning Board to be open. Adequate notice having been given pursuant to the New Jersey Open Public Meeting Act in the following manner. First, on January 8th, 2021, a copy of said notice was mailed to the Asbury Park Press and the Tri-Town News. Second, on January 8th, 2021, a copy of said notice was hand delivered to the clerk of the Township of Howell. Third, on January 8th, 2021, said notice was posted in the office of the planning board and on the bulletin board in the Howell Township Municipal Building, 4567 Route 9, Howell Township, New Jersey. Members of the public will have a chance to ask questions and comments on applications once the chairman opens the hearing up to members of the public. If you wish to ask questions or comments on an application, you will need to use the raise your hand feature and we will bring you into the meeting one at a time. You will need to have audio and video capability. You will be sworn in and you will need to provide your name and address. For anyone calling in, you can raise your hand by dialing star nine and lower your hand using star nine again. Star six will mute or unmute you. If anyone, oh, excuse me, this meeting is video, videotaped for possible future broadcast on Howell Township TV 77. Thank you, roll call please. Mr. Bavai, I have not heard from him. Mr. Dorado? Here. Mr. Husser? Here. Chief Kudrick's been excused. Mr. Leggio? Here. Mr. Nicastro? Here. Councilwoman Richmond has been excused. Mr. Seaman has been excused. Ms. Casper? Here. Mr. Cristiano? I have not heard from him either. And Chairman Tannenhouse. Here. You have a quorum. Thank you. Can everybody please rise for the Pledge of Allegiance and a moment of silence for all of our first responders and those both serving here and abroad. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America flag and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. All right, we have some approval of minutes. We have approval of minutes for regular meeting May 13th, 2021. Eligible voters are Mr. Dorado, Mr. Husser, Mr. Legio, Mr. Nicastro, Ms. Casper, and myself. Do I have a motion, please? Make a motion to approve. Do I have a second? I'll second. Thank you. Mr. Dorado, please. Thank you, uh, Lily, for a second. Thank you. Okay, roll call, please. Mr. Dorado? Yes. Mr. Husser? Yes. Mr. Leggio? Yes. Mr. Nicastro? Yes. Ms. Casper? Yes. And Chairman Tannenhaus? Yes. Motion carries. Okay, we have regular meeting, meeting minutes of May 20th, 2021. Eligible voters are Mr. Dorado, Mr. Husser, and myself. Do I have a motion, please? Make a motion to approve. Okay, do I have a second? I'll second. Thank you. Roll call, please. Mr. Dorado? Yes. Mr. Husser? Yes. Chairman Tannenhaus? Yes. Motion carries, thank you. Okay, next regular meeting minutes to be approved are June 3rd, 2021. Eligible voters, Mr. Husser, Mr. Leggio, Mr. Nicastro, and Ms. Casper. Do I have a motion, please? 
Motion. Do I have a second? Second. Thank you. Roll call, please. Sorry, who was the second? Mr. Castro. Thank you. Mr. Husser? Yes. Mr. Leggio? Yes. Mr. Nicastro? Yes. Ms. Casper? Yes. Motion carries. Great, thank you. Thank we have you. any vouchers? I have no vouchers this evening. I do have correspondence. Okay. Uh, ordinance number zero or O2122. Yep. Uh, changing the highway commercial zone, adding restaurants with or without drive through. We need to decide if that is substantially consistent with the master plan. Okay. Do we need any commentary, so, please? Mr. Or, Chair, no? by my, I okay. would. I, I would. I would submit that it is consistent with the master plan as you know, we, you know, our, our nine quarter, which is where the, the highway commercial zone is, you know, is, is intended to promote economic development. And this is a step in that direction. And, and it's one of the underlying goals of our master plan. So I would submit that it is substantially consistent. Thank you. I would agree. Does anybody else want to comment on this ordinance? And, and if not, I'll entertain a motion that is substantially consistent with our master plan. So moved. Fine. Right. Thank you. Do I have a second? Second. Second. Thank you. Roll call, please. Mr. Dorado? Yes. Mr. Husser? Yes. Mr. Leggio? Yes. Mr. Nicastro? Yes. Ms. Casper? Yes. And Chairman Tannenhaus? Yes. Thank you. Okay. Any more course, um, any more correspondence? Uh, the other, yes, uh, it's not really correspondence, but Wadsworth Development is on tonight's agenda and they did not do their notice in time. So they need to be rescheduled and they will re-notice. So if we could do announcement for members of the public. Okay. Steve? Yeah, okay. If anybody's here tonight uh, for case number SD-2998 Wasworth Development, otherwise known as Ramtown Estates, um, that application will not be heard tonight. It will be heard at another meeting to be scheduled. N new notice will be provided. So we're not carrying it on notice because the notice has to be redone. So uh, if you got a letter in the uh, mail or you saw it in the paper, it's going to be in the paper and you're going to get another letter in the mail. Great. Thank you. Any more Thank correspondence? You. The only other thing is that we're probably going to have a special meeting August 31st. That is a Tuesday night. Thank you to everybody whose cars responded back to me and let me know whether you're available. And um, we also have a meeting Thursday, September 2nd that week. So I just want everybody to be aware there's two meetings that week. Okay. Thank you. And that's it. Thank you. Very good. All right, on to resolutions. We have uh, actually, oddly enough, the first resolution is for case number SD-2998, Wadsworth Development, LLC. Eligible voters are Mr. Dorado, Mr. Husser, and myself. Make a motion to memorialize. Thank you. Do I have a second? Second. Thank you. Roll call, please. Mr. Dorado? Yes. Mr. Husser? Yes. And Chairman Tannenhaus? Yes. Thank you, motion carries resolutions memorialized. Okay, next resolution is case number SP-1083, ICE Fund 66679 LLC. Eligible voters are Mr. Dorado, Mr. Husser, Ms. Casper, and myself. Do I have a motion, please? Make a motion. Thank you, Casper. Second. A second. Thank you, Mr. Husser. Roll call, please. Mr. Dorado? Yes. Mr. Husser? Yes. Ms. Casper? Yes. And Chairman Tannenhaus? Yes. Motion carries. 
Carries resolutions memorialized. Okay, next resolution is case number SP-1009, A-3, Par Golf LLC. Eligible voters are Mr. Husser, Mr. Leggio, Mr. Nicastro, and Ms. Casper. Make a motion. Thank you. Second? I'll, I'll second. Thank you. Roll call, please. Mr. Husser? Yes. Mr. Leggio? Yes. Mr. Nicastro? Yes. And Ms. Casper? Yes. Motion carries. Resolutions memorialized. Okay. Next resolution, case number SP-1055-1228, Realty LLC. Eligible voters are Mr. Husser, Mr. Leggio, Mr. Nicastro, and Ms. Casper. Do I have a motion, please? Memorialize. Thank you, Nick. Do I have a second? Second. Thanks. Mr. Husser? Yes. Mr. Leggio? Yes. Mr. Nicastro? <laughs> yes. Ms. Casper? Yes. Motion carries, resolutions memorialized. Thank you. Okay, next next uh, resolution is case number SP-1087, Hutton Street 17 LLC. Eligible voters are Mr. Husser, Mr. Leggio, Ms. Casper, and myself. Make a motion. Thank you. A second? Second. Roll call. Mr. Husser? Yes. Mr. Leggio? Yes. Ms. Casper? Yes. And Chairman Tannenhaus? Yes. Motion carries resolutions memorialized. Okay, thank you. We have uh, next cabin tonight? That no, we didn't get the, they is not didn't ready. finalize the, uh, the resolution yet. Got it. Okay, submission waivers, case number SD-2997, Larrabee Realty, LLC. Uh, can I swear in Laura Newman? Sure. Laura, do you swear from that any testimony you provide before the board this evening will be the truth? I do. Thank you so much. So, Mr. Chairman, I think Mr. Pape, Jared Pape, is probably here. I'm not sure if you want me to just go right into the waivers or actually, well, I see that he's in. Why don't I go through them and then we could defer to him if he has any comment? Sure. So, Mr. Chairman, the waivers are specifically outlined in item three, page three of our June 17th, 2021 report and it seems like it's a lot because this essentially is classified as a major subdivision but essentially it is a minor subdivision it's one lot that will ultimately yield two lots so given the nature of the application i take no exception to the granting of these waivers for the purposes of deeming the application complete okay thank you mr pate would you like to add anything to Ms. newman's comments or do you concur I defer to Ms. Newman's comments. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Does anybody from the board want to make any comments? If not, I'll entertain a motion. I'll make the motion, Brian. Thank you. Do I have a second? Second. Okay, thank you. Roll call, please. Mr. Dorado? Yes. Mr. Husser? Yes. Mr. Leggio? Yes. Mr. Nicastro? Yes. Ms. Casper? You have to unmute yourself. Yes. Thank you. Chairman Tannenhaus? Yes. Motion carries. Thank you. Okay. Uh, next. Submission waiver up is case. Excuse me, Mr. Chairman. Mr. Alfieri called me and said he may not make it, and that's his application. So okay. we can hold it till the end. Okay, we can do that. We can come or, back to it. Or if it doesn't make it tonight, we'll reschedule it. Very good. Okay. Thank you. Next case up for a submission waiver is case number SP 1084, Black Rock Enterprises. Ms. Newman? That is Mr. Pape's case as well. Sure. So, Mr. Chairman, uh, we have a July 2nd, 2021 review letter. The applicant has actually resubmitted information, and based upon that submission, the only waiver or submission waiver that is being sought is item 20, architectural floor plans and elevations. 
And because this is a repurposing of existing structures on the site, for the purposes of this being complete, I would take no exception to the granting of that waiver. All other waivers noted in our report have been provided. Okay, fair enough. Mr. Pate, do you have anything additional you'd like to add? This thing is making my job very easy this evening. Now, yeah, the resubmission um, satisfied the waivers with the exception of um, architecture, and we would be um, very pleased to work with your on that. You muted yourself. We lost the last couple seconds. How about now? You're good now. Okay. Uh, I was just saying that the there's a waiver request for architecture and that we would be um, uh, happy to work with your uh, boards professionals um, on that. Okay, fair enough. Any Anybody have any comments or want to enter in a motion? I'll make the motion, Brian. Thank you. Do I have a second? I'll, I'll second. second. Thank you, Ms. Castor. Roll call, please. Mr. Dorado? Yes. Mr. Husser? Yes. Mr. Leggio? Yes. Mr. Nicastro? Yes. Ms. Casper? Yes. And Chairman Tannenhaus? Yes. Motion carries. Thank you. Thank you all. Okay. Thank you. Have a good night. Unless you're up for the next application. Well, that's it for me. All right. Have a good night. All Thank right. Uh, first application for the evening is case number SD-2994, Michael Hammer. Who's representing? He's actually representing himself, but Mr. DeFalco is here. And so is Charlie Bell. You're muted, Mr. DeFalco. I'm representing, this is Rich DeFalco, the engineer representing Mr. Hammer. It's a private individual. He does not require an attorney. And it's a minor subdivision application. Of lot 30 31.02 and block 37 on Oak Glen Road. The uh, Mr. DeFalco, should we swear you in? Yes, please. Mr. DeFalco, do you swear from that any testimony provided okay, before the board this evening will be the truth? Yes, I do. Okay, and your name is Richard DeFalco, D I F O L C O? That's correct. Thank you. And Mr. Bell, in, he's here in what capacity? He is the surveyor who prepared the map that is before the board. Okay, do you anticipate that Mr. Bell will be testifying this evening? I don't believe so, unless the okay. board has a question if... of the survey itself. Okay, so if we need his testimony, we'll swear him in at that time. Okay. Thank you. So I'll give the board a brief history of the, pro of the property. Uh, the original lot was lot 31, and Mr. Hammer purchased that in 1972. At that point, it contained 18.78 acres of land. 1972 was actually before the Howell Code of 1974 was, was adopted by the council. So he's had the property a long time. In 1993, he was before the board and received a minor subdivision to cut off one six acre lot. This is in the ARE6 zone. And basically it's a farm field the 18 acres was a farm. And he cut off one acre, I mean, one lot of six acres back in 1993. For some reason, although it was filed, it was reapproved by the board in 1999. The same application was reaffirmed and he filed another deed for the same one six acre lot in 1999. And that brings us to today, which is like 20 years later, and he's applying to take the remaining land, which is 11.4 acres, and take one six acre lot out of that, leaving a 5.4 acre lot as the second lot. So he wants to cut the 11.4 acres into two lots, one being a conforming lot, and one being undersized, being 5.4 acres. His property 
abuts the Central Railroad right of way to the, uh, I guess, to the west. And the SED zones across the street of Oakland Road to the north and east. And to the south, beyond the ARE6 zone, which is a very narrow sliver in this part of the township, is the, multi, uh, is the mobile home park zone. So he has proposed the two lots and besides the lot area variance that he needs, there's an existing structure on the southern lot that's been there for many years. It's a greenhouse and it's uh, short of the front setback. It's a pre-existing condition. It's mentioned in Ms. Newman's letter. There's 65 feet where 100 feet is the standard. On the, on the lot to the north, which is what he's called lot B, he's proposing to build a, a 2,000 square foot house. That's the footprint. And that would be set back at the proper setback. So the proposed dwelling does not have any variances associated with it. It needs to setbacks. But as far as the lot area, it is deficient. And, uh, and Mr. Hammer just walked in. So right here. Are we on? Well, we're on. Yeah. We were second. We're on. So he would be proceeding under a C1 hardship variance for the reason that the land area that he has control over is bounded by the railroad on one side, by the existing six acre lot on the opposite side. And there's no additional land that he can purchase to make his lot larger. And it's, it's my feeling that the the lack of area is not going to diminish the, the goals of the master plan because he's preserving farmland. The balance of the site, other than the house, will remain as farmland. Uh, the mapping by Mr. Bell shows quite a bit of wetlands on the property, but it is a farmed wetlands. It's not a wooded wetlands. So it's been farmed for decades and it's gonna to propose to be remain to be formed. The only difference now is there is a, a small dwelling and a single driveway proposed at the center of the property. There are, se there are several waivers that he needs for the site, which would include a waiver of uh, curbing along the edge of the road. Uh, I do make note that the original application of the first minor subdivision in 1993 granted him a waiver from installing curbs along Oakland Road. So he's continuing to ask for that waiver. And the rest of Ms. Newman's letter, he would comply with as far as the details on you know, the driveway and the grading around the dwelling. He does have a septic approval from Monmouth County Health already. He has a wetland delineation approved for the area around the home. And uh, that's basically his case at this point. Mr. DeFalco, what goal of zoning are you advancing by creating an undersized lot? Well, we're, we're applying for the uh, the C1 variants. Right, which I don't I don't agree with. So I'm asking you, there's no hardship here. There's no hardship. You have a lot that's more than conforming in the zone. You're creating a non-conforming condition. There's no hardship associated with that. So I would submit to the board that that's not, this is not a C1 case. This is a C, very clear C2 flexible C. And you have to demonstrate a goal of zoning is being advanced by creating a lot that is non-conforming in the zone. Well, the goal that we are continuing to, to promote is preservation of open space and farming. But wouldn't that be able to happen whether you subdivide or not? 
Like that has nothing to do with the creation of an undersized lot. I mean, the town has zoning for a reason. You have more than enough area there to comply with the zoning. You know, because I want an extra lot is not justification for relief. No, but, but I think originally when the town uh, took 33 feet of his property for the road right away, which is 1.3 acres from his 18 acres, it made him undersized. They're so not making it undersized. Absolutely not. You're at 11 acres. The site, the zoning calls for six acres. There's no, you're there. They did not create a hardship for you. You right. have a lot that's conforming in the zone. I'm saying the original tract of land that he owned, 18.78 acres, and he dedicated land to the township of 1.3 acres, leaving him with the balance of 17.4 acres. And that's why he has less land than the, the six acres for each lot. No, he has he he has eleven point four acres that yeah, is conforming yeah. in the zone. There's nothing that says he has to be able to get two lots on this property. The zoning is six acres, and you have not provided justification under the zoning or under the MLUL to justify an undersized lot. And I did bring this up when you came to the tech meeting: is that po proper planning is not to create undersized lots, and you creating a lot does not generate a hardship. So I don't, I don't agree with the testimony, Mr. Chair. I think that you know, the applicant should have to provide justification under the law and provide what benefit of zoning they're getting by creating a lot that's non-conforming in the zone. Well, he is providing adequate light, air, and open space around the home. Which you could do on an 11-acre lot as well. I mean, at the end of the day, the town has these provisions for a reason. And if we were to say, oh, well, we're close enough in every case, we would wind up with undersized lots all over town. So, you know, to, you know, if you have an undersized lot to begin with, that's one thing, but to create it is another. So I would submit from a planning point of view, the, you know, the justification provided is not, you know, in my professional opinion, does not meet the burden. Right, he's ninety percent of the required lot area. I understand that he's ninety percent. I understand. I, I just i I understand what you've said. I don't agree with it as justification for a variance to create a lot that is not compliant in the zone. I mean, we did talk about this at the tech meeting, and I told you very clearly that that was my position. Let me try to under Let me try to understand this if I can. So the the lot to the plan left that has the greenhouses on it is that still part of the overall parcel or that's already been been separated the lot on your map is part of the parcel that's the left the left hand piece of the property that's so we're splitting this land up into to three parcels is what you're saying no two there's two parcels no, that's yeah, 5.4 is a lot. Mr. DeFaco, is the house being proposed for sale? For sale? You're selling the house? The new house? No. I live in my son. No, he's going to live it in himself. So why can't you put that lot, why can't you put that house on the six acre lot uh, and make it conforming? Lot. The greenhouse and the farm is, would, would, not, would, would not need to be six acres. Question. Well, there, there's already there's already a, a former house on the, on the first lot. The lot that's to the left is lot A. <clears throat> there's a foundation. The greenhouse, isn't that a greenhouse, Rich? This this two this two structure. There there is a there's a foundation of a house that got burned down. It's, it's foundation only. It's shown. Rich, there's no house on there, right? So, Mr. DeFalco, if I could make a recommendation, can we? Is there any way that we can pull this plan up? Ms. Newman or Ms. Bean, can you? I can pull it up. Pull this up, please. Just give me a minute. <clears throat> Uh, 
Thank you. Lot 3101, is that, is that part of? No, that's, that was the first six acre back in 1993 that was cut off the piece. Okay, and does he still own that or that's that sold to someone else? He still owns that. Okay, so 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 then then the that dark line between lot 3101 and 3103A, that is the new line you're proposing between the two lots, or that's what was lopped off years ago. That was lopped off years ago. The new line is to the right, which is a straight line up and down, further to the right. That's so the new line right there. That's, that's the new the one. So am I seeing their existing non-conforming where we have the greenhouses over a lot line? Yes. Right. That's a that's an existing condition. The greenhouse is 65 feet from the right-of-way line of Oak Glen Road. And is it right, that is over your property that, line between the two lots? And is it is it 3101 that you're proposing to keep as a farm? Yeah, both pieces will be farms. 3101 is a farm, 3103 will be a farm, and 3104 will still be farm. Still be With a house on it. Can I ask our attorney a quick question? Steve, are we sure that they noticed to include lot 3101? Because if the greenhouse is encroached and they're on the subject property? Unfortunately, I don't have uh, the notice with me. Um, but to, to answer the question, if this application involves the originally subdivided lot 3101, which apparently it does, the notice would have to be provided around the entire 18 acres. Uh, so 200 foot notice would be required around the entire, plus the notice would need to identify that the subject matter of the application involves lot 3101. Unfortunately, I don't have it in front of me. The notice doesn't have it. We did, we did send letters to those other people. We did, we did get the list and we added them to the list. You notice them, but you didn't list that in the notice because that wasn't part of your application. And then that would expand the 200 foot radius beyond that lot too. No, they did do that. Oh, they did. Because they got two notice, two lists, one for each lot. So, it, so here, here's, here's the, the problem. When in the notice, you have to describe with reasonable amount of uh, uh, description the uh, in, in detail the lot that's being subject to the land use application. If they if they only identified two of the three lots, but then colloquially described it, perhaps that would pass muster. But if they were just describing it by street address, lot and block, without describing that it includes the entire 18 acre uh, mass, then there there's a issue of insufficient notice. Uh, can I be sworn in? This is Charlie Bell. Yes, uh, uh, Mr. Bell, do you swear from that any testimony provided before the board this evening will be the truth? Yes, I do. And Charlie, can you please put your camera on? You had um, it on before. Uh, I'm trying. And unmute yourself. I think I, okay, I, I, I'm muted, but I can't get the camera on because the, uh, you brought up the, um, the plan. It, okay. it stopped me, okay? Okay. Um, Mr. Bell, I mean, uh, so uh, can you identify who, who you are? Are you a, a professional? Do you want okay. to qualify yourself as a professional, et cetera? Yes, I will. My full name is Charles Lee Bell, Jr. I'm a licensed land surveyor and planner in the state of New Jersey. I've been licensed since 1982. My office is located in Titton Falls, New Jersey, and I'm the prep uh, preparer of the plan, the, the survey and the plan of, of the, the minor subdivision plan for the property. Okay, do you intend to testify in your capacity as a land surveyor and a professional planner? Uh, just the land surveyor. Just the land surveyor, okay. Does the board accept um, Mr. Bell's qualifications testify in the capacity of as a professional land surveyor? We do, thank you. Okay, you're accepted Mr. Bell, please proceed. Okay, uh, the application that I, the way I prepared this map was for lot 31, uh, 3102 which is just lots 3103A and 3104B. Uh, everything we have worked on is for those two lots only. The um, greenhouses that are encroaching onto the, I guess the um, south side of the property are on the adjoining property, lots 3101. Uh, the greenhouses are a metal frame with a um, uh, plastic overlay over top of them. 
Uh, the um, so you know we did not include lot 3101 in this application because it was not part of this minor subdivision. Uh, Mr. Bell, can I ask you? Uh, Mr. Defalco had previously identified some subdivision approvals that were granted by this board, you know, 20 something years ago. Are you aware of any approval where this board or the, the Township Zoning Board approved the location of those greenhouses as being across lot lines? I mean, can you describe if those greenhouses have received variance approval in the past for their location? Uh, I believe those greenhouses were not there when the 92 uh, subdivision was granted. Just bear with me a second. I think I have a copy of that map in my file here. Please just uh, bear with me a second. Maybe Jen, uh, Jen Beam, while the surveyor is digging out his archives, can you describe like from a planning perspective, the import of, of those encroaching greenhouses and the impact on the subdivision that the applicant is seeking? Well, because the there's two, I mean, there's three greenhouses very close to that lot line, two of which are over the lot line onto, you know, one of the newly created lots that, you know, that farm development or that development now is, is part of that development is on this property. And, you know, they don't have setback relief or what have you. I mean, it's like eight, it's almost nine feet of on the one farm greenhouse and it's 17 and a half feet on the other because that that development is on this property you know my my opinion and I would defer to you as the attorney is that 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 development is part of this property and the development associated with the subdivision can here's the prior subdivision plans can I okay. ask a question Ms. Beam yeah since Mr. Hammer still owns lot 3101 what's preventing him from just readjusting everything because I, I don't believe we have any minimum requirement for a farm and just make the other two lots compliant with the zoning. I, I would I just I just was thinking the same thing that if you wanted to subdivide out for a house I don't know why the two farm lots are not consolidated into one larger farm and then there's more than enough area there to have two conforming lots. Mm -hmm. Which was my, my which was my point, uh, Brian. Thank you, Mr. Castro. I have the uh, plan out now. I already have the plan up. Do we no, need to put to... that in? Do we need to, to 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 mark that? That's already been marked. Oh, okay. Chairman, but quick question: Are we taking jurisdiction, Steve? Was the notice proper? Well, it, it sounds as though it was not. Um, given it, the application that is now before this board does involve that third lot, which was not, while the applicant did send the 200 foot letters to the proper radius, the content of the notice itself was missing an essential lot. That's, that's the problem. It wasn't, it may not have been described properly in the notice itself. Just for the sake of time, does the applicant want to re-notice or, or what, Chairman? Yeah. You just got you just got an opinion from the attorney that we don't have jurisdiction. Yeah, I mean, I mean, notice. I mean, I would agree that we don't have appropriate jurisdiction. But how does Mr. DeFalco want to want to? We want to turn this into a, a, an opinion. I can ask a question. What would the notice have to say if he's not? I mean, he owns both lots. The fact that one's encroaching, uh, I understand. But what does that have to do with the subdivision? The fact I guess my question is, I guess again to to Steve. If he owns both lots and he's creating a lot that's undersized, wouldn't it consolidate automatically? It consolidates automatically if this board doesn't, if you have an approval from this board that grants a subdivision, it wouldn't merge. Right. It's if when, when uh, undersized or otherwise non-conforming lots are commonly owned adjacent, they do merge by operation of law. They do. So, but if this board were to grant the subdivision, that would give some type of a, a protected status against the automatic merger. I mean, I so think- So the problem here is, um, to answer Mr. DeFalco's question, if I was doing this application and this situation was in front of me, I would say that the existing lot, there's encroaching greenhouses, you're seeking setback and approvals by this board to allow the greenhouses to remain cross lot. That would require certain variance reliefs that weren't requested. 
while that may be included if you put a coverall like all other variances, I think by not identifying the original lot by number is problematic. He's owned this for, like I said, 30 years or so, and the farm has been there in his ownership to remain in his ownership. 50 years. So 50 years, he's telling me. But the, the greenhouses, which which are used and are straddling the you know imaginary lot line of his own property between himself and himself, I don't I don't see that as really being I mean, granted it, it's a setback issue to a lot line. And it's not merged because they're separate and distinct lots. Each of those lots is proposed to have a dwelling on it, which was shown on the 93 subdivision map. There is a I mean, Rich, at the end of the day, if he owns both properties, my recommendation would be to rethink your subdivision, come in with a conforming lot on the one side where the house is proposed, get rid of that lot line in between the two farm properties and call it a day. But, but they want properties, I agree. Those dwellings. Like to me, I have to say, you have not provided any planning justification to justify an undersized lot. None. So, Ms. Bean, let's wait for a second. I think Mr. DeFalco said something. Mr. DeFalco, are you saying that you're eventually trying to create two residential lots? Well, the subdivision from 93 created two residential lots, it showed a house on both lots. Okay. The house on lot 3102 on this plan <clears throat> burned down. The foundation is still there and he plans to rebuild that house. That's fine. So so if he wants to maintain that lot, just take the lot line between 3101 and 3103, readjust it so the lot line is not going through any of the greenhouses, make that that a conforming six six acre lot, and then move the lot line of 3104 and 3103 over a little bit so you get another six acre lot. And just take it away from the remaining farm lot to the left. Mr. Chairman? Yes. If I could, and, and while I think the dialogue may be helpful to the applicant, I think we still have to go back to what our council told us. He doesn't believe that the, this notice is proper for the hearing. Oh, great. And, uh, okay. and so we, we continue to dialogue back and forth and offer suggestions. I think here's what happened. Lot 310.01 wasn't included as part of this application. They clearly have greenhouses which encroach onto the subject property. Whether or not those are legal, legal structures, we've yet to confirm. But again, to continue down that path, that lot has not been included in the notice for this hearing, nor is it included in the plans that are provided. So I, I just I just want to caution the board that the further we go down, I think they- fair, fair enough. I'm just concerned that, you know, if we, if we don't have proper jurisdiction, I'm not sure that the benefit of the continued dialogue. That's all. Fair enough. I think we need to end it. We have to re notice. Re notice? Yeah. All right, we'll have to re notice and I'll speak to uh, Mr. Hammer about the uh, what the board said about the lot, the, the new lot. Okay. So is there another date we can schedule or we have to start over from scratch? Well, I'm going to need to revise the plan in order to include that lot. That the, all, all that lot is not included in any of the uh, any of the information on the minor subdivision. Or else we can move the greenhouses and eliminate the issue. Correct. The uh, 1992 subdivision, the greenhouses were not there at that time. Rich, since you have to re-notice. We can wait and get another date when you decide what you're doing after yeah. you talk okay. to Mr. Hammer. All right. That sounds good. Eileen, the only question is the, uh, the, the time of decision for this application appears to lapse on the 17th of September. All right. So let's. So we grant an extension until we figure out a new date and we come back in again. Is that acceptable, Steve? Uh, yes, but what's the what's we needed uh, some certainty if, unless you're going to follow it up with a letter um, identifying the time of decision extend to a certain date so the board is protected. Because I could only put them on September second. 
Well, if if the if they can be on uh, schedule for September second, and, and we notice they would have time to get the plans in ten days in advance of that. So perhaps you don't have to deal with the uh, time of decision um, issue this evening, unless the applicant wants to extend it anyway. Uh, can I say something? Sure. Uh, I'm not sure I can get the plans revised in in the uh, the amount of time allotted right now. Okay. Eileen, I, I, how much time do you typically ask for for it to be extended under these circumstances so that the board is protected? Really? I usually ask for whatever they think they need to get the plans done plus additional time. And we so get it to the end of the year? Oh, sure, but let's pick a, a little quicker date. Let's say November 1st, then, if there's a date. Okay, so the applicant is extending the, the time for this board's decision on this application until November 1, 2021. Is that correct? Yeah. Okay. All right, and then we can just get another date later. Okay. Thanks. So uh, let me make an announcement. The application for Michael Hammer, case number SD 2994, um, is being adjourned uh, given notice issues. Um, the applicant will receive a new hearing date, um, which has yet to be determined, but will be provided. Us, um, and new notice will be provided as well. So if you got a, a certified letter in the mail, you will get another certified letter in the mail uh, with the new date when this application resumes hearing before this board. So uh, this application will not be proceeding this evening due to the uh, defective notice. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Thank Have you. Day. Okay, uh, Mr. Nicastro, any master plan update? Mr. Levi is not here. No, Jen, do you have anything to add? I know no, you're just still I, working on things. Um, I will, the conservation element is like 99.9% .9 complete, ready for the subcommittee to review it. But I think we'll be able to put that on an agenda pretty quickly to get that approved. And that includes the ERI that was prepared as an addendum to that document. Um, the housing, or the housing element, <laughs> God forbid. The land use element is a probably about 80%. There's like bones, which I need to go over with the subcommittee. And you know we started taking counts for the circulation element, but that's one that one's a little bit farther behind. Okay, thank you. Appreciate that. Anybody else have anything you'd like to talk about? If not, just two things. I'd like to introduce Eileen Kusa. Eileen is here oh. with me tonight. In case I need to take off, she can cover for me. Okay. Well, we don't have and the other thing name. is, we will not be going to live meetings in September. We will We're going to stay on Zoom indefinitely because of the Delta variant. OK. OK, very good. Eileen, welcome. Thank you. <laughs> OK, with that being said, I'll entertain a motion to adjourn. Motion to adjourn. Thank you. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Right. Everyone have a good night. Enjoy the rest of your summer. See you at the end of August. Take care. We have another night, meeting everybody. August 19th. Oh, August 19th. I'll be on vacation, so you guys enjoy. <laughs> okay. Good night, everybody. Thank you. Good night. Good night.